Chris Olds here at the uh, National Sports Collectors Convention in Baltimore. I'm here with uh, Dirk Hayhurst of the uh, Toronto Blue Jays, who's here uh, promoting his book, The Bullskin. <laughs> I'm not Keith Olbermann, right? Uh, the Bullpen Gospels. And uh, he's quite a character. This guy is a talker, <laughs> all different kinds of things. First off, tell us a little bit about the book and what makes it different, unique. <laughs> uh, well, uh, one of the big things is, is that I wrote the book while being an active player. So uh, I got all the drama that kind of comes along with like being the guy who writes about his life in the game, while being in the game, and making all your teammates scared to death. I'm going to write about their personal life, and uh, I didn't, I didn't do any of that actually. I didn't throw anybody under the bus. There's no steroid scandals. Yeah. Uh, I think what people are surprised about the book is, is that it's, uh, it's pretty wholesome. Uh, it has a message at the end, and that it was written by a player, no ghost, you know, right. Jose Canseco style, right. like, uh, it, was, uh, it was a legit, uh, a legit writing, and, you know, I'm proud of that, I think, uh, you know, it's doing extremely well, so the volume of copies sold, yeah, it's, it's a best seller, yeah, it's yeah, a best seller, it's itself. like, you know, I'm not a big name, I'm not Steven Strasburg, right, right, right. like, I'm Derek Harris, no one knows me, so it had to be good, and, uh, and I think that the uh, the proof yeah. is in the pudding. Yeah. Now, t what's, explain to me the Garfus. I've, I've heard a little bit about Twitter. Some kind of unique character. Or okay. That, is it worked into here? Uh, yeah. Right at the very end, you'll see a reference to the Garfus. But I signed uh, this this image that I made up. It's this half giraffe, half moose. The breeze fire lives in the Tibetan mountainside in the sacred baseball grove where organic baseballs are grown. They're magical in the MLB ones. I think Steven Strasburg actually threw a Garfus thrown ball. I uh, can't confirm nor deny that. Um, hey, you know, it, just, it was just something that kind of shot out of my head one day. I thought it would be fun. My wife works with special needs children. That thought it would be a good kind of mascot for them. And, but the baseball community got a hold of it and it kind of mutated into this alpha predator, you know. And so uh, now it's just it's just a symbol of what I do. And hopefully someday Tops and I will work out a little deal where, uh, you know, we have a girlfriend's car. Right. So. We, we were over at the Tops with earlier talking about everything. And uh, we, people were suggesting that he's the perfect player for Tops, Allen, and Ginter. <laughs> so if you agree, tell everybody. Help me out. Get it out there. <laughs> Yeah, because actually, you've been in the majors for how many seasons? Uh, well, or, I've spent more time on the DL in the majors than right, I have on right. the, you know, so I'm an, an elusive prey up there. Um, but I think I've got about a year and a half, maybe a little bit over that. And you don't yet have a car. I don't. I don't yet have a car. So I'm thinking, you know, if I did have a car, what I'd like to do is something really, you know, unique, like get a sub card and maybe hand write a story. Mm -hmm. Over all the cards, you have to collect the cards to get the story or order, you know, that kind right. of stuff, and uh, to kind of tell you what the writing is. Right, now you, you admitted earlier, I used the word admission because this is kind of shocking, but not necessarily, <laughs> that, that you weren't a collector as a kid. No, it's I a little wasn't. bit unusual if you're a baseball player. You know what? I, I, I did, but I did in the boom of in the late 80s when everybody was doing it. I had no idea what I was buying. I just got everything because I thought, I'm rich, you know, yeah, you know yeah, my exactly. friends are doing it. Uh, but no, I wasn't. A, I wasn't a big collector. I actually had more Magic: The Gathering cards than I did baseball cards. So, uh, how's the national? How's the national? I mean, the, I presume this is probably one of your first appearances in a show like this. Yes, my first appearance. In a show. How's that been to see this whole world? How different it is, interesting. Um, it blows you away. I, on one side, and I don't mean to detract in any way from the card collecting community, but on one side, it's like I can't believe people care as much about what Stuff. people like. Yeah, what I do. You know, it's just kind of overwhelming because, I mean, you know, I, it's, I know the kind of great individual I am, I can't believe my stuff would ever be valuable. And don't worry, it's not. My stuff is not valuable. But I'm saying other people, like, you know, the Star Wars, their stuff is yeah. valuable. Um, and that kind of blows me away. You know, when you're a kid, you always want to be here. And then when you get here, it's like, well, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's just kind of mind blowing. But I guess there's a, is there a market for this, there's a commodities thing, and just like the dollar, I mean. Well, I mean, something like this, though. when you do have a card, I'm saying when you do, <laughs> I'm putting the heat on them. Um, you know, something like this, you're already, you have a built-in, a lot of people that know you from this. When you have a card, it will get more attention than a picture of a similar statue. You know what I mean? Um, Pat Nishek is a very fan-friendly collector, uh, picture, he's, he's a collector himself, um, he's with the Twins, you know, he's been up and down, had some injuries, you're also a part, you were. Yes, yes. So, I mean, he's kind of the same kind of a player, um, and yet, within the collecting ranks, He's, he's very popular, you know, in terms of, um, you know, what we do is we, we track and, and kind of rank values of card prices. Um, you know, certain level of players, you don't, you know, they come in at certain level of expectations for values. Right. But because of something like this, you know, your first cards will get more attention. So, you know, your rookie 
I'm very honored. There you go. <laughs> I need a first card. I need that value. I need to retire, for God's sakes. I keep pitching like the way I am. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, no, I understand, you know, and I think on the player's perspective, it's um, it's kind of, you know, behooves us to have that personal interaction. <laughs> right. and, uh, especially in a market, like a commodities-based market, like uh, uh, trading uh, like this. You know, the, the originality that you can add to a card or that you can give to a collectible item really makes it special, not for just the price, but for the fan itself. Right. You know? And I think there's, uh, even with the addition of social media and web pages and so forth, uh, there is still a large gap between the player and the collector or the fan. And I think these little things really let you know what he's How like. It's like. Uh, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So, so, and you mentioned social media, you're on Twitter. Correct, correct. How can they talk to you? I am at the Garfoos. The G A R F O O S E, the Garfus at Twitter.com. Uh, you, you can uh, you can follow me there. I'm I'm a high energy profile all the time. I'm pretty wound up. So well, this might be my highest energy interview of the day. <laughs> so on that note, I appreciate well, thank your time, you very much. and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.